PD-1 is a molecule present on T cells and B cells called program death one, which was discovered way back 1992 by a scientist in Japan named Hanjo. And what it is essentially is a molecule that's upregulated on immune cells upon activation. And it is what we call a checkpoint protein. Think of it as the break or one of the many breaks on the immune system. In T cells from patients with cancer, PD-1 is highly upregulated and it reflects a state of what we call immunologic exhaustion, meaning those T cells don't work very well. In the initial clinical trials done with antibodies directed against PD-1, there was clear evidence of clinical activity in the very first trial at the very lowest doses. In fact, the initial trial was done with a drug called nivolumab, otherwise known as MDX1106. And when it was tested in patients with melanoma, kidney cancer, lung cancer, it was evident that could, it could induce responses. Sometimes those responses were long-lasting. There was an effect of this antibody over a vast range of doses, ranging from 0.1 to 10 milligrams per kilogram, which is a hundredfold dose escalation. And even at doses of 0.1 milligram per kilogram, there was evidence of anti-tumor activity. There are other antibodies that have activity. There is a drug called pembrolizumab, which is another very similar but humanized antibody. Nivolumab, of course, is a human antibody. Pembrolizumab has activity in melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, bladder cancer, and it is another anti-PD-1 antibody. There are also antibodies against PD-L1, which is the ligand for PD-1. So you could block either way. You could block the PD-1 receptor on the T cell, or you could block the PD-L1, mostly present on the tumor. And either way, you would interrupt this, uh, this pathway and allow the immune system to work better. There's activity for MPDL 3280A, which is a, a PD-L1 antibody, for example, in melanoma, bladder cancer, and a variety of other malignancies. I showed that not only does a PD-1 antibody, nivolumab, have activity in melanoma, but that you can treat patients who had failed other immunologic checkpoint inhibition with ipilimumab, which is a CTLA-4 antibody, and you could still have a high response rate with the PD-1 antibody, nivolumab. Interestingly, the response rate was at least as high, if not higher, in those who had failed the prior ipilimumab as in those who had never seen the ipilimumab but had failed other therapy. Not only that, you could deliver this PD-1 antibody safely with low toxicity to patients that had had severe toxicity to the other antibody, the ipilimumab, which blocks a different checkpoint protein known as CTLA-4, also on T cells. We also added a vaccine strategy with multiple peptides to the nivolumab, to the PD-1 blocking antibody. And even though you could show that you could upregulate responsiveness to the peptides included in the vaccine, and the increased reactivity to the peptide vaccine was associated with clinical benefit, as shown by a res high response rate, there was no evidence that at the end of the day, either adding the vaccine or not adding the vaccine changed survival, because both the overall survival and the progression-free survival of patients who got the vaccine was identical to the overall survival and progression-free survival of the patients who got no vaccine. suggesting strategies to eliminate these myeloid-derived suppressor cells, which clearly inhibit immunity in melanoma patients and in cancer patients in general, would be a very good idea. And in fact, we now have a trial that we plan to begin soon with a strategy to eliminate the myeloid-derived suppressor cells and add the nivolumab, the PD-1-blocking antibody, together. When you take all the data together, it certainly suggests there are some interesting biomarkers that we should test the utility of these biomarkers is not to predict who's going to respond. It's to suggest new strategies to boost the clinical efficacy of a PD-1 blocking antibody. And presumably these uh, biomarkers would be appropriate for those getting other PD-1 or PD-L1 antibodies. And it remains to be seen that that is the case.